recording started uh you can go ahead thank you very much uh, hello everyone uh, my name is Haider Musawi and I'm going to be talking about the writing process specifically for techies so someone who, who has tech experience and would like to share their experience uh, but when I talk about writing I'm actually I'd like to, to uh, distinguish or uh, address two things what do I mean about what do I mean by writing when I talk about writing and what are the benefits for you to gain uh, or to improve your skills in writing? So when I talk about writing, I'm not just talking about uh, writing words. I'm talking about writing as a process to improve your thinking and your communication skills. And whatever, can, whatever form of communication you would like to get into, whether you want to write or you want to uh, give presentations or you want to create videos, whatever it may be, writing helps improve that communication process. That helps improve your, your thinking before actually uh, writing anything or producing anything, uh, but it also allows you to trans, it feeds into different forms of communication. So if you want to write, to produce videos, for example, the process of writing allows you to structure your ideas and usually you'd have a script that you can use within video. So uh, writing is uh, much broader than just uh, communicating through words or through typing text. Um, the other thing is, so what benefit can you gain from writing? Uh, I would say uh, if you're, um, uh, if you, uh, work in development or work in technology, uh, that's a dimension to your profession. But being able to educate others and share your experiences creates a lot of opportunities for you. So uh, whether, it's, uh, whether it's a way for you to learn. So uh, there are so many people who developed their personal brand. They developed um, a, a reputation because they, they didn't start off as experts. They weren't, didn't build a platform uh, sharing their expertise. They actually learned along the way and they shared as they were learning. So as an example, uh, CSS Tricks, uh, a very popular website when it comes to learning CSS Tricks. Uh, but the way it started is the founder sharing what he was uh, learning as he was going along. So this is called uh, documenting your journey. You don't have to be an expert to get started. You just need to be able to communicate something that people will find interesting. So uh, what we have here is something that I call the writing process, which is the sequence of steps you need to take in order to produce anything. At the core of all the whole process is step five, which is to write. So uh, whether you want to write a tweet, a blog post, or a book, this is the core step. But then depending on the kind of writing that you're doing, you may need to, uh, to do the, the uh, steps before it or the steps after it. So for example, uh, there's something called journaling or free writing. And you don't, when you do free writing, it can be private, so there's no editing, design, publishing, promoting, uh, and it doesn't have any structure. You're, you're actually just dumping your thoughts and emotions onto a page. So writing is at the core, but then depending on the kind of writing that you're doing, you will uh, do the steps before that or the steps after that. Let's start with step zero. Step zero is fundamental to the way you see yourself and what kind of writing or educating you would like to do. Many writers struggle with this point because uh, sometimes they think of themselves as a specific kind of writer. So I write nonfiction or I write fiction, and then they struggle to identify with something beyond what, they build, uh, what they've built a brand around. So uh, knowing what the, the body of work, the kind of work that you want to produce helps you develop the clarity of the direction that you want to take. Uh, if you don't really have a sense of what uh, body of work you want to produce, it's not important. But sometimes if you notice yourself getting stuck 
because you don't know how to put yourself out there, there may be an issue related to body of work uh, or what's your, what do you want to be known for? Okay, so that, this is the point uh, related to body of work. Then step one is purpose. There's a, an intention or a reason for you producing that, uh, whatever piece you want to produce. You have to be aware of the message you want to communicate and the message that your audience wants to uh, learn or the, uh, the audience wants to uh, hear. Uh, is your piece an opinion piece? Is it a tutorial? Uh, is it a proposal? What's the intention behind it? You have to be clear about the purpose of the piece to be able to know what direction you're gonna take it in, what the scope of the piece is going to be, and every other decision will follow on from the purpose behind the piece. Uh, research will depend on how, how well you know the topic. So a lot of, a lot of you have experience, uh, you already have experience. So you don't need to do much research for you to actually uh, communicate or share your existing experience. Uh, so research really depends on how much you already know. Uh, brainstorming is, research is from external sources Brainstorming is from internal sources. So what ideas do you have? What questions do you have? You can begin or uh, you can dump your ideas, the, the stories you want to share, whatever it may be. Without resorting to external sources, you're just thinking, uh, what do I want to cover? What do I already know? Okay. Research and brainstorming, again, it depends on the kind of piece you want to produce. Even if your piece requires some research, but you already have some experience, you might want to switch uh, the two steps. So you do brainstorming first, get like um, a general outline of the kinds of topics you want to cover, and then supplement them with research. The outline is really important, especially for long pieces. Uh, so if you're writing a blog post, if you're writing a book, the outline is the structure or the sequence of ideas that you're going to share. And it's also important for video. So if, even if you're preparing a presentation, like the one you would prepare for Barcamp, for example, you would need to have some sort of sequence of ideas. Uh, and you have to think, where is the audience? Um, what does the audience currently know? Or what do they think? And then how do I guide them towards the end result that I want them to reach? Uh, and notice uh, my presentation, the outline of it is 10 steps to the writing process. This is the structure of the uh, presentation. Um, next is step five, but I'd like to mention to talk about step five and step six, because it's really important to maintain a separation and the distinction between the two. Uh, writing and editing require separate thinking hats. And if you try to do both at the same time, you will experience writer's block, okay? When you write, you should not edit yourself. So you don't judge the words that you're uh, putting onto paper or onto the screen. You just think about the intention. What am I trying to communicate? And then you let the words flow knowing that when you reach the edit process, or, or sorry, the edit step, you will be able to revise and uh, assess the quality of what you've written. But you should not judge yourself as you're writing. You should not question the words that you want, uh, you want to use while writing them. Uh, and there's a popular but not halal expression, write drunk and edit sober. Uh, yeah, write drunk and edit sober. What that means is allow your subconscious to take over when you're writing, okay? No analytical thinking, but then when you're editing, analyze and critique what you've written, okay? So it's really important when you write, as long as you have the outline, as long as you know what you're going to be writing, you'll be able to sequence your ideas and let them flow. When you get to editing, uh, you can, uh, look at the editing process as a layered process. So one of the things that you need to spot is, uh, is the structure of the piece uh, good or not? Okay, is the sequencing of the ideas good or not? 
if you're not happy with something related to the structure, you have to go back to outlining. If there's something not clear about maybe the purpose, or you feel like you didn't flesh out the examples enough, you may need to go back to uh, researching, for example, or brainstorming because there, you feel there are certain things you've not properly covered. Okay, so depending on what you uh, discover within the edit process, you can go back to the different steps uh, that uh, you've taken. Uh, now, the analogy I'd like to use, I know the impression you may get is that it's a sequence of 10 steps and then you go through them in sequence. But it's actually an iterative process. So when you reach editing, you may have to go back to writing or go back to outlining, brainstorming, and so on. But with any iterative process, the way I like to think about it is that it's not cyclical. It's actually a spiral. And it's a spiral that's going up. Because each time you go back, you already have, uh, you have gained experience about, about the piece that you're producing. So it's not like um, it's lost productivity because every time you're improving and improving on the piece. Um, uh, design, a lot of uh, techies aren't comfortable with design, uh, but you can keep it very simple and remember that the purpose of the piece is what matters the most. So if you're producing a tutorial, maybe you want to add basic images or screenshots. Uh, if it's uh, abstract concepts, maybe you want to introduce basic models to communicate the idea. It doesn't have to be fancy. And you might want to actually start using a platform that comes with its own design, like medium.com, for example, because you don't have to worry about the design itself. Uh, but you, always, you can always consult those who are experts in, let's say, design, in publishing, in promotion, or marketing, if, if these are things you don't feel comfortable with. But don't let these steps prevent you from actually writing uh, what you already know. So uh, that's design. You can uh, keep it simple. Uh, publishing, you have lots of options. There are, there are uh, digital platforms that you can use. You can self-publish, uh, or you can go through the traditional route. Uh, personally, I don't have experience with traditional publishing, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, uh, but uh, keep in mind that you have a lot of options, and you want to, to think in terms of being comfortable putting your uh, work out there uh, and um, uh, trying to find the most relevant platforms to use. So depending on the language you want to cover, on the technology, technology you want to cover, you m might want to choose separate platforms to publish your uh, work. Uh, I would also say actually within the edit step, the, uh, because this is an important point, uh, with, while editing, you may want to get feedback on what you've written to make sure that it works. Now, there are two types of people you can consult. You can consult experts. Uh, they can give you feedback, but I would be cautious about something called the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is basically when you've acquired enough knowledge that you no, lo no longer recognize the people who don't know what you know, don't know what you know. So you just use terminology and you assume that, that the people you're communicating with uh, already know it. And this is a very common problem with experts. They assume everyone is at their level or everyone is at an intermediate level when there's a high chance that uh, most of your audience might be at a beginner level. Uh, you get to decide who your audience is, but keep in mind, if you're targeting a specific audience, don't assume they already know what you know. Okay, that's publishing. Uh, promotion, the last step is uh, don't assume that whatever you publish will stand on its own and will support, will spread the word about itself. This doesn't happen. If you publish something, promote it in other platforms, let your friends know, uh, uh, share it with communities that might be interested, but don't do it in a scammy, spammy way. Uh, as long as they're interested in what you have to say and uh, they're open to receiving information or to receiving, um, uh, to receiving knowledge links within that platform, uh, then do so. 
but don't assume that your writing will stand on its own. Uh, and just in, in closing, I'd like to mention, uh, right now, there's a, a website called teachable.com, which is a platform for online courses. There's a platform called gumroad.com, and it's for selling digital products. There are other platforms, but I mentioned these two specifically because they're actually doing a lot better during the corona, uh, coronavirus crisis than they were before it. There, there's, a lot, there's a huge market when it comes to education that you as an expert in your field can capitalize from by doing what you're doing, doing what you're good at, but also opening a channel for you to learn, to share what you learn, okay? And this um, uh, allows you to become a lot more resilient, especially when a crisis like this happens, when people are losing their jobs, when people uh, uh, don't have as many opportunities to find jobs, you can create a platform for yourself where you become an expert, a go-to expert for a certain um, uh, field of knowledge. Okay, so that is my presentation. If anyone has any questions. Thank you, Haider. Thank you for your question. There is a What if I suddenly have an idea for a piece? Should I dump what's on my mind and then go through this framework? Uh, yeah, so I would definitely recommend, uh, sorry, should I stop sharing my... Okay. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend dumping whatever you have. Uh, and actually sometimes when I work on a specific project, uh, I still get ideas about other projects. It doesn't mean I ab abandon the project that I'm on. I just note down the ideas or the notes for the other project until I pick it up, okay? Uh, and I have a really weird system. I actually have a chat on WhatsApp. It's a group chat and I'm the only uh, person in the group and I leave notes to myself in WhatsApp. So when I go to the laptop, I copy them and, uh, uh, and add them to whatever project they're, rele they're relevant for. Any other questions? We have five more minutes. Uh, so if you have more questions, feel free to ask. I actually posted a question, Heider, um, which is around the tools that you use at every step. You talked about the 10 steps, but maybe you want to highlight what applications like that you recommend in, in every single step, if you have any. Uh, okay, that's a great question. And, and one second question. Why do you use WhatsApp with yourself? Why don't you just use a notes app? Okay, excellent question. Okay, so the, um, what do I use in terms of uh, software? Uh, when it comes to brainstorming and outlining, I usually uh, work on paper. Uh, and so uh, I don't believe that you have to choose between physical notebook uh, or digital notebook, I do a combination of the two. Usually when I brainstorm and when I try to figure out how, the, how to sequence the ideas, I begin on paper because it's a lot more flexible. And then I use a program on uh, the Mac called Task Paper, which is basically an outlining tool. It helps, me, um, it, it helps me sequence my ideas or dump my ideas and then be able to easily move the sections around. Sometimes. I think uh, of a certain sequence and then I realize, uh, no, it's not working out. So I can move the sections very quickly. Uh, most of my writing, I, the actual writing, I do on Google Docs. So I, I really don't need any fancy um, writing platforms. I tried using some other platforms like Evernote, Scrivener, uh, Ulysses, something like that, uh, but they didn't work for me. So. Uh, my preference was uh, to them, uh, to use just use Google Docs. Uh, I might be so I'm kind of tinkering with a new platform called Rome Research, uh, which allows something called bi-directional links. Which is, let's say I'm writing about a certain topic, I'm able to tag a specific point and link it to another topic. So when I go to that topic, I'm able to see how the different topics connect. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I think these are 
the only things that uh, you need. But uh, there's a saying, um, it's not the sword that makes the swordsman or swordswoman. So uh, uh, it's like, uh, try to figure out which tools you would find um, work best for you. Uh, but keep in mind that ultimately what you want to focus on is the content and the way, uh, like how do you communicate ideas? How, how can you get your thoughts out somewhere? Any other okay, questions? Thank you. You didn't mention the whole WhatsApp. Uh... Yes, uh, WhatsApp. So basically, it's easier uh, to build on an existing habit than it is to create a new habit. I've tried using other note uh, note taking apps, but it it created some sort of, uh, like additional friction because I feel like um, I need to check multiple inboxes or multiple uh, places. WhatsApp, I spend 50% of my life on. So I'm al already there. It makes it easier for me to open WhatsApp and uh, leave notes than to uh, get used to using another uh, platform. And I open WhatsApp on my, mobile, uh, on my mobile and on my laptop. So I've already established these habits. I just use that as a conduit to share my ideas. Thanks, Haidar. I think um, in the chat, they're kind of agreeing to have a, a, a five minute break. Yeah. Hey, do you have anything to add? Uh, anybody has uh, questions? One last, we have room for one more question only. Okay, no more uh, questions. I'm gonna go through the questions and then respond uh, on the chat. Yeah, uh, yeah, great, thank you very much. I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah. Uh, they're asking you to reboot the website. Uh, go through the chats and you can reply to them, please. Okay, definitely, I will. Thanks a lot. No problem, and I'll stop my video.